Okay, stand by. Just a take. Yeah, take. Rituals is interesting. It was, um, it didn't get very good critical notices, but at some point, I think Stephen King, famed author, came out and said, uh, there's this little movie called Rituals. It's really scary. And uh, a cult has developed around that. Why does something become uh, a cult's hit? Because it's, it's so bad it's good? Because there's something about it that's really unique and you can't get in uh, uh, mainstream movies. A horror film becomes a cult horror film basically by being rediscovered. Um, generally somebody will will dig up an old film and say boy you know we haven't we haven't you know nobody really talked about this film when it came out uh, why not you know let's let's reevaluate it so you know you have one person watching it and, and s recommending that other people watch it and soon you know a lot of people are rediscovering a film it gets a dvd release with all kinds of special features and suddenly it's a it's a cult film rituals definitely deserves a cult status um, interest in this film has been general, been really, you know, shooting up in the last uh, four or five years. When it was first released, I think Ebert made it uh, his dog of the week like two weeks in a row. There's a scene where some doctors who are hiking in the woods wake up and find that one of their friends has been killed and his head's been put on this pike. And it's creepy uh, for a lot of reasons, but one of the creepiest is that, you know, they, they all might have been killed, but they weren't. And this guy just sort of put this gross head on a pike. And the reaction of the doctors is to uh, get angry and throw the head down a cliff. <laughs> One of my pet favorite moments absolutely has to be when uh, the characters are crossing the uh, the the, uh, the river um, on the on their little rope. Um, I don't want to really give too much away as to what happens, but it's it's a very very uh, effective little uh, moment. I think Rituals is a movie that is uh, ripe for rediscovery because it has a maniac in it, it has a maniac chasing these doctors, but the ultimate horror actually comes from just being lost in the woods and being, they, their shoes are go missing, uh, they have to walk through the woods with no shoes, and I think there's something, I mean, it's very Canadian, the whole concept of being lost in the woods, even if you have never been lost in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> well, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong in there. Well, uh, you know what they say. Cold hands, warm heart. A lot of critics you know, dismiss horror in general, and outright even. And that's because people usually judge a genre by its lowest common denominator. So when people think horror genre, oh, I know the horror genre, that's Freddy Krueger, and that's Jason, and that's Chucky, and that's, uh, you know, all of these stereotypical slashers, you know, and blood and guts and things like that. And that's how they're judging it. It's like judging science fiction by Star Wars and Star Trek. You know, that, sure, it's a big part of it. And those monsters are a big part of it too, but that's not the whole genre. Horror fans are very indiscriminate in their tastes. They're hugely indiscriminate. They will hate the idea of Michael Myers returning for the fifth time, but they'll go and watch it. In Canada, We've had some sequels, Prom Night 1, 2, 3, and 4, but there's really nothing connecting the two to 3 to 4 except the title. I mean, Prom Night 4, the kids don't even go to a prom. They're in a limousine, and they drive past the prom, and they go to a house in the country for a weekend of fun. Couldn't they have at least gone to the prom? It's, like, ridiculous. Canadian horror got pretty diluted in the 80s and 90s because 
it just got more, the video boom came out and there were suddenly a lot more of these movies being made for a lot less money and they were trying even harder to be American. There's a few interesting Canadian slashers. Um, Prom Night obviously is probably the, the crowd favorite, although although not a personal favorite. Um, it's, it's generally the one that people think of when, when you talk about a Canadian horror film, and, and people do recognize that as a Canadian horror film. My personal favorite has to be My Bloody Valentine, shot in the Maritimes. A very, very Canadian film, right down to the scenery. Again, there's that kind of lack of morality you find in, in American films. Any character really could, could die in that, in that film. And it, it kind of touches on some other Canadian aspects too. Um, the, the joblessness, living life in, the, in a kind of a, in a mining town or a, or a blue collar town. My, My Bloody Valentine is definitely a film that, uh, that, that needs to have uh, more people watch it, I think, uh, and realize that it is Canadian when they are watching it. Don't say I didn't warn. They also drink a, about a swimming pool full of moosehead and just as the movie goes on, moosehead beer uh, is always being drunk. There's big neon moosehead beer signs. Whenever someone has to carry something around, they put it into a moosehead beer box to carry it. So it's like the longest ad for moosehead ever. My Bloody Valentine has a huge cult following. And, and all over the world, not just in Canada. Roses are red, violets are blue. One is dead, and so are you.